We're actually not in a Senyo people, we're a Somala, so we're Somala Chumash, which means we are directly from the San Inez Valley. You're not going to find a language like that anywhere, it's very, it's definitely from this valley. Haku maktu kakushi ala palahulapu na Somala na Chumash. Hello, my name is Kathleen and I am from Santa Inez and I am a Somala Chumash. Hello, my name is Michael Lopez. This is Kathy Marshall, my sister. We are on the San Inez Indian Reservation at our tribal hall. It's like a big family. If we have some family that are into the culture, some family into education, some family into business, some family into investments. It was really neat. I mean, Kathy has, has done a wonderful job in her department, and, and more she taught our culture. Uh, to me, I get excited too. Oh well, yeah, oh yeah. So that, uh, that's that's one of the things that, that, we're, that we needed. What we do know is that in uh, on certain dances, um, our grandmother said that they either was bands mm -hmm. on their arms and on their legs. In most of the dances, there was a lot of red ochre used. I have dots on my face. That's usually the dance for the Shutuish dance, which but I like playing the dots, mm -hmm. um, which is um, the seaweed dance. And the seaweed, I like putting it on because the seaweed dance was actually only danced by women. It's for um, bringing back the people that you love that are far away. There was a woman from the village of Kalawashak um, who also had the power to sing the seaweed song and bring the loved ones back. We know where we come from. We come from the village of Kalavashak, our family does. We also come from the village of Soktanokmu, which is up the Nora Mountain. This village, or this uh, mountain point, like I said, is um, Grass Mountain, which we called um, Wotoponish. But at the base of Wotoponish was our largest village site, Soktanokmu. And there was about 90 houses there. So we, that was the largest Somala um, village known. We come from Galvashak, which is towards 154. Well, I just got, I just finished my term, six years as chairman of the, uh, of the uh, Gaming Commission. And uh, now I'm actually uh, the, the Housing Commissioner. And I'm also uh, I'm on a couple boards, um, like our, our Economic Development Board, keeping us afloat with like, you know, the world of the casino and, and other investments that we have and, and getting that going on. Because really without that, we don't, you know, we, we wouldn't be where we're at. We moved here, then they developed housing and um, we got to have one of the first houses that came up here and it was next to my grandfather's house and so then we got to meet a lot of the Indian children that, that, yeah. mo that moved into the neighborhood. Well, we've seen a lot of changes when we were, when we, when Kathleen and I were both small coming the reservation, there was just you know, a couple of houses on the reservation and, and, and you know, if you lived, lived on the reservation you weren't like, you know, because it's really, you, know, you don't want to, you know, well, they're, they're, they're from the reservation. But our neighbors um, really participated in the culture and mm -hmm. Um, so there was some classes that were taking place at our tribal hall. We started with the program that we have housing. We didn't have the casino back then. We didn't have, so we were relying on, on government bonds and to help us housing, raise money for housing. And sometimes we'd go on field trips and go out to Zaka Lake and, you know, we've made our tule, traditional houses called ops and they're tule huts. You know, we'd get supplies from the government, like government cheese, you hear about the like blocks of government mm -hmm. cheese. That cheese was actually really good. <laughs> I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but we'd get like stuff like that, like 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 hand downs like from the government, like the local community too, if, if they if they shot some deer in someone's field, like fifteen deer would just say, hey, give it to the reservation, they'll they'll, they'll take it. And we did. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're kind of frowned upon back way back then I think, mm -hmm. you know. But now that obviously, you know, things have changed and you know, laws have passed and we've actually put come together and built this beautiful facility of a casino and some our other investments, hotels and, and restaurants, and build tribal halls like this, and things have changed now. You know, the community looks upon us as a strong leaders in the community. It feels good. You know, it hasn't been fair for a very long time. I mean, you know, since day one, right? I mean, things have been taken away from us. You know, the language was stolen from us, taken away by many ways by sending the kids to boarding schools, and you know, they weren't allowed to speak the language. Even 
are people saying, don't speak your language anymore because you'll be looked down upon, you mm-hmm. know? I remember my mom saying that her mom said, you know, tell people that you're Mexican. And Maria Solares is, let's see, our great, 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 great grandmother. And she worked with um, J.P. Harrington to save the language. Her paper sat there for years and years and years without any Somali Chumash person ever looking or seeing them. She is definitely the person that not only our family, but most of the tribe is related to. It's not just about saving the language, she saved stories. Mm-hmm. And she saved traditions, and she saved the names of village sites. Mashtimolokinash ishak. Ishko machichi. Shish ichichich. Ma'aluyen kachelek. I feel it's my responsibility to my great 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 grandmother mm-hmm. took all that time to save the language and somebody has to bring it back. You know, right. she did all that work and it's who we are, really. She knows that, she knew that, and we know that. I am a senior language apprentice and I've been working with the language for five years. And there was no written language, so um, Dr. Applegate, who is a linguist, who did his dissertation on our language, it's called Somala. So we found Dr. Applegate, the okay. tribe did, and he came and did some classes, which he's a linguist, okay. it was too hard, people could not understand what he was saying. Yeah. Um, and so Nakia came to me and said, what do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Starting a language class, revamping it, hiring some people that want to learn the language. And so that's how I was like, "That's I think that's why I'm here. We actually passed a bill, AB 544, mm-hmm. this year, um, which allows federally recognized tribes to credential their language teachers. So we go, can go into the public schools and teach um, with a single subject credential. We have a summer program, which is going to start July 5th, where it's all about culture and language and, you know, we're, a lot of people think of Native Americans and they think about them in our villages and our huts, but we're, we're here today. That's something that we want to relay to the kids because a lot of times you hear questions like, you still live in teepees, you know, your kids go to school, you have a car. You know, and it amazes me because, you know, and I, so that was part of our goal was to go out and say, we are here today. I thought it was going to impact your life right there, knowing about our culture and where we came from, where no one did before. But now we have the tools and the ability to to have a, a, a program like we have here and to you know, educate people where we came from, what we did, where we where we came from to where we are right now, and what we and we, and we can give back to the community and to like charities that that really need it. This is a river otter. We used to have river otters through Can here. Can I touch that? Yes. Um, and thank you for asking, because a lot of people just come up and touch it. Yeah. We prefer not. This is shawaksh. This is actually down from the hawk that I have. So the hawk that's on my back, uh-huh. this is the down. And we actually use this for a lot of um, ceremony. We use, use this as an offering as well uh-huh. um, in a lot of the ceremonies that we do. This is what we call regalia. It's not a costume. What we wear when we dance in ceremonies. And we make all of our stuff. And when we wear our regalia, we're, we really feel like we're bringing the animals back to life. The birds that we find on the side of the road, this is where I get my feathers. It, there is a ceremony done for those birds, and we bring them back to life when we're dancing. A lot of our new dances and our regalia is also coming from what our grandmother, Maria Salatas, left us um, in the notes. Come on.